Okay, it wasn't very bad at all. I had to get the uh, click pried up to where it would uh, stay up off of the um, ratchet, which as you can see here it is. And then after I got it to where it would stay in position, just with the other hand on the um, winding handle, I was able to uh, let it down without much trouble. So. Make sure that it's actually loose. Which I believe it is. Go ahead and loosen this screw here. Move that back out of the way. What is nice about this is there is, if you park this halfway, there is a neutral position there where you don't have to um, sit there and toggle back and forth. That's why I would not want to rely on one of those. If I only had one of those, you would um, get yourself in position where you would be in trouble. You, what you'd really have to do is come in here on this inside edge and grind this out so that you would have um, better accommodation for some of these movements that have these large clicks like this one does. As you can see that has a much larger click than most movements do. It's not like on a Waterbury or an Insania where the click is down close to the ratchet wheel and those clocks usually have smaller ratchet wheels too. This has got a very large full-size ratchet wheel on some clocks, like a New Haven or a Seth Thomas, the spring is attached to the main wheel, the great wheel, and the end of the spring presses on a slot milled in the click. On this design, this Gilbert design, the spring is actually part of the click. Move it here. See, that spring is a part of the click on this main wheel. So, very important to have both types of mainspring winder. I said if you were going to have only one, though, I would get this type. It'll do everything. They might be more expensive than, than these. I think you can get one of these for about $25 or so. Um... And if you're only going to do a couple of clocks, yeah, sure, that'll probably be okay. You'll probably be all right. If you plan on doing very many clocks, I would get the mainspring winder. They've got the attachment for doing the loop end springs. There's a hook for doing the uh, hole end springs that are in a mainspring barrel. And it's just a much better investment overall. So, the only thing left to do now is to... Uh, stick a screwdriver down in there and pop the uh, spring off of the uh, hook and the arbor and separate the great wheels and arbors from the main springs. And then these can go into the cleaning solution, which is what I'm going to do right now. Sometimes it takes a little bit of finagling to get this to happen. Uh, these are on there pretty snug. The winding key will usually help sometimes too. And then when you finally do get it off, that's what the spring looks like. There's the 
enters the center of the arbor with the hook that engages the hole at the end of the center of the spring. And the other one. Sometimes it helps to have a key to apply uh, some tension in the in the backwards direction to help spring come loose. So these parts now go in the cleaning solution to get nice and clean. The springs will get inspected and checked for uh, cracks or rust or anything. If they are acceptable, they'll get reused. If not, either I'll have to try to fix the defects or replace them. So thanks for following along. In the um, next part, we should uh, be taking a look at repairing the uh, center arbor friction. This is Oklahoma Bridges. Thanks for watching.